Um, welcome, everybody. We're here for a very special occasion, the convergence of two creatives. Um, the, our, our first creative here today, that's, that's his, his work is, is what uh, initiated everything that's happening today. We're here for a great event. Avatar Simrit, I'll, I'll bring on the camera here uh, shortly. He's a performing, he's a, uh, record, a performing and recording hip hop artist. Yay! <laughs> Woo! Hello! <laughs> I know, Monique told me to come up oh. and say hi. Proceed. He's a performing and recording hip-hop artist. He's a writer with two published collections of poetry, and today he is announcing his first book, A Dream of True Time. Avatar, why don't you come up here and wait? <laughs> Welcome everyone, thanks I, for I, being I, here. I uh, introduce you all to Avatar Simrit. Avatar discovered, uh, discovered this um, unique and uh, inspired book called Transcendence Calling by, by artist and author Monique Rebell, whose original painting is uh, on the cover of the book. After reading this book, Avatar was, uh, was inspired um, by by the uh, by the by Monique's story and her unique perspective from firsthand experiences, and her and her painting and contacted Monique to do a uh, cover for his book, a, a Dream of True Time. So having having found the perfect artist, the perfect creative spirit to collaborate with, with his book, um, he contacted Monique. Monique, why don't you come over oh. here and wave? <laughs> I, I give you two creatives. Oh, yeah. Can you see all three of us? Yeah, can you see all three of us? Okay, good. Get a thumbs up from the cameraman. Uh, so we are here today to, to two things to announce. Creative number one, Avatar's book, his, his, fir his first book, A Dream of True Time. And yeah, my first novel. Novel, mm -hmm. okay. And, uh, and for the first time, seeing to uh, unveil the painting that Monique Rebel did for the cover. Now it's important to realize that the uniqueness of the situation, no one has seen this painting. Neither Avatar, <laughs> neither anyone in the room, neither, oh, no one out there. Mm -hmm. Rumor has it that the painting was done in the dark with a blindfolded <laughs> artist by the, inspired by spritz, spritz from the next dimension. No? Oh. Oh, okay. mm -hmm. No, it was her, it was it was a creative spirit of Monique and, and her and her uh, paintbrushes and canvas. Whatever you say, Taylor. <laughs> you know, it, uh, all all creatives start uh, with a blank canvas, a blank page, and that's something that's uh, that uniquely binds all creative spirits together. Is that in, in in the universe, if you if you're a drawer, if you're a hip hop artist, if you're a writer, it all starts with a blank space, and it's truly a, a unique um, uh, occurrence when. When something, when, when when a novel comes from the blank pages of a book, or mm. or a painting comes from the blank pa a blank canvas, mm. and to have an author, a poet, a musician, a hip hop artist, mm. doing his creativity in his part of the universe in contact with with another creative to create something um, mm. to collaborate is, is, is truly an event, and that's why we're here today is to unveil unveil this collaborative painting, the painting, the painting inspired by, by Avatar, mm -hmm. um, interpreted and, and, and created by Monique, not to be seen by anyone. Did you see it? I only did. be seen I by did. one. Only, only seen by one. Only seen by the creator. Um, so, okay. Are we, okay. Are we ready? I, I am unveil? ready. Ready to unveil the painting, yes. Do we have any yeah. ceremonial music or anything? Or any, is there well, any chance? Do we have the a music chant, up. a prayer? Oh, don't, don't do it yet, don't do it yet. Hold on, hold on. Okay, hold on. we need. I'm gonna turn it up a little bit. This is all carefully re rehearsed. Is you may think out there that this is ad lib. <laughs> okay, the great moment. I've lost count how many times they've done this. Creative number two. I'm creative supposed to be oh, here? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah, put this key there and look creative. <laughs> and, okay. All right. Is between one of these curtains, I'm told that maybe the green one. 
Here we are. Are you ready? We will see. Everybody, please prepare. Sit me down. <laughs> oh my God! Awesome. Oh, There's oh, another oh. curtain too. Wow. <laughs> I give you a dream of time. A dream, dream of true time. A dream of true time. <laughs> I love it. Oh. <laughs> Is there more? You love it? Yeah. Anything more you want to do to it? Yeah. I think you should. Wow! 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 Oh, oh, you have to one harder. Woo! What is well deserved is the compensation oh, for you. the painting. Here you go. <laughs> right, a huge envelope. This is the payment I got. Yeah. <laughs> wow. I'm so honored that you took the, the time is. to create this and just like be inspired by, you know, the collaboration between oh. what I envision in the book and then your visual, you know, visionary whatever brought this forth. I, it's so amazing. I have you. like no words, not words sufficient to describe it. Oh, I'm so <laughs> glad you like it because once you told me, I, uh -huh. I have to show you this. I have yeah. to show everyone this. Okay. So I, I uh, when we first talked about it, after mm -hmm. made a little <laughs> sketch, mm -hmm. okay? <laughs> so you can see that sketch is this showing closer? Yeah. And you can close close up on the on the painting too. Okay. With, with oh this, yeah. Oh yeah. Strip. There you go. <laughs> so after showed me this, and then I quickly made a sketch in oil uh, to show just the basic idea what I came up with from after looking at this after we talked a little bit. And then I, uh, and then uh, and after I really liked it. Yeah. And you said I remember you said that this looks better than what you imagined yeah. about it. So that was very encouraging. And after that, I just decided that that's my policy. Anyway, when I do a commission, at first we talk to, talk about it, and I I love it commissions like that. We talk about it and then uh, see the first sketches, the first ideas, and if uh, if the person who's, uh, who's, whose vision it is mm -hmm. sees it as okay, as good, mm -hmm. then I do it all the way without showing yeah. the painting in the meantime. At all. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Because in the production, you know, when you work on it, like Karen, you know, when you work on it, it changes all the time. Yes. So, halfway through, you can't describe, oh, this is going to be different, and that's going to be different, and, and so, I didn't want to show it, and after, agreed to, <laughs> <laughs> to it, so... This is the first time ever. I, there was only one person who saw this painting before. And Somebody it's, else it's, saw yeah. it? How about not, not finished. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. I was sending him pictures. Oh, okay. Yeah. Uh -huh. Every now and then. Uh -huh. Yeah, but not not the final one. Mm -hmm. So no one saw it, the final. <laughs> but just like during the making. But yeah. he's not seeing it. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> but he's watching. Cool. <laughs> it's very stunning. It's mesmerizing. It's, it's like people will definitely be drawn to it. Nice. <laughs> so you guys, you guys like it? It's beautiful, Molly. Yeah. The blues. Yeah, well, yeah, yeah, it's gorgeous. Oh. <laughs> well, I like the sketch. It's like an yeah, aura. Yeah, that's how you did. It's like a beautiful aura and then the connection. Mm -hmm. So, so for this momentous occasion of this convergence of creativity. Mm -hmm. So much creativity in, in one in one event. Mm -hmm. um, we're gonna have champagne. Yeah. Yay! <laughs> so 
everybody out there, get your champagne glasses out. Mm -hmm. A toast. <laughs> yes, you guys out there, get your champagne glasses. Oops. I'm going to trip over. That's what's so beautiful about a collaboration, because you don't necessarily know what the final you know, product oh, is going to look beautiful. like because it's the combination of two creative souls. And when it becomes you a know? bestseller, boy, everybody's going to see your work. People like this kind of, uh, what I think, people like that. Yeah, the fantasy stuff. I think it's going to sell really well. I think so, too. Like to tell here. You think it'll pop, pop the... Oh, Anthony, you switched. switch. You, you became the, I, the, you became the, the cameraman. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Okay. You, uh, oh my God! Should we do the fly somewhere? To our convergence of creativity. Yeah. But you guys have your glasses. Just, just hold, just have it ready. Just hold it. Just be ready. Okay. Basically. Woo! Oh, that was good. <laughs> Mazel tov. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Oh, I love being served when I'm sitting down. <laughs> Feels so sultan-like. So regal. <laughs> Not my usual slobbery side. <laughs> Do I have to walk over there? Yeah. Here, I'll get you. Oh, thank you, Karen. Mm -hmm. I love being waited on. I'll trade you. Juggle. We're going to have juggling champagne glasses. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so that will much, come on the second round. On the first. You do that when you get drunk? <laughs> I've been told. I've been told stories. With no recollection. He's not wearing so that jury. Many hidden talents. He doesn't have that Jerry Garcia tie on for nothing. Right? We can all. Oh, would you get up now? No, I get up. So, so, in, so in the audience yeah. here today, we have. We have Fellow creative and artist Karen. Uh, 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 I'm not going to get back down. Creative, creative yeah. artist musician Anthony. We should we get closer to the Cre yeah. cre creative father of Avatar. <laughs> creator of Avatar. We forced him to be a creator. Can you guys come closer here? Stand around I'll, the, the I'll masterpiece. Later, I later. Uh, Subtract from the beauty of the painting. Yeah. It's just a frame from yeah. it. You can see the outside of the frame. Oh, that's quite all right. Perfect, yeah. Mm -hmm. So come here, outside. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Okay. So we bring to the universe. Yes. Yeah. There we go. The convergence of two creations. Yeah. 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 Beautiful outcomes. Yeah. To the creativity. Yeah. Yeah. Hey guys, thanks for watching. I hope you enjoy it. No. <laughs> so what we're going to do after enjoying the champagne here is we'll have an informal conversation. Um, we'll start out with a conversation between the two, the two artists. And, and, and the audience here, and if anybody will be monitoring the chat on um, whatever technology we're using out there, the technological chat, send your questions technologically chatting like yeah. through the devices in front of you, and we'll have an interpreter read those and <laughs> transfer that to our dimension here. Yes, we'll talk a little bit about the painting, and we will talk about the book. And after we'll read an uh, excerpt from his book. Yeah, so stay tuned for that. A reading yeah. excerpt. Don't that, go anywhere. Yeah. An excerpt, a reading. Yes. Reading, yes. You might even see the back of the painting. Yeah. <laughs> Anthony, can you close up on that? And you want to sit when you read? I was not the model so for the uh, male. Uh, <laughs> yeah, just wanted to let you know. I, that could lead to a lot of confusion. I know. <laughs> just to clarify. Yeah, yeah. So, anyone has any questions about the painting? Let me know. Why don't let's. So, if you want me to moderate, you can. Sure. Oh, Lord. Uh oh. Let me hold you. Hold this, yeah. Right, yeah. First time artists have seen it. 
Let's see which one is yours. Oh. In the way that I had envisioned it. I envisioned a way bigger, but I like them more subtle, the way you did it. Is there, like, what was your kind of process? I'm, I'm so that? glad you noticed it, because mm -hmm. I actually um, did mm -hmm. try mm -hmm. to make them much bigger. Okay. And, mm -hmm. uh, I, I, you know, this is the final thing, yeah. but as I said, you know, when, during the time when I work on it, it changes, right? right. Mm -hmm. Aaron knows that. Mm -hmm. It just changes, and things some things work and some things don't work. Right. Mm -hmm. And I and that's why I have pictures right. of, oh, of the right. stages. And I have a stage, and I can show it to you later. Yeah. A stage when the auras were really strong, uh, and especially this link was really strong. Right. And it just was too much. I see. Mm -hmm. It just didn't work. But that's that's really cool that you noticed it. So I had to make it so it really works because. This is so, there's so much going on. Yeah. And then, the auras were just, were just, were just overkill. Yeah. Like this, you can still see the auras, mm -hmm. but they are in, in the situation. They're right. not coming out, and they're not killing the rats. Mm -hmm. And this, especially this, I worked on this, I changed it several times. Yeah. Because I didn't know, I actually wanted to be as close to your your uh, sketch right. that you did as possible. Cool. And at first, it was so strong, it just it just uh, was. I was just not happy with it. I see. Uh -huh. So you know, when I paint, I put my painting, I put the painting right next to my bed, as my mattress uh -huh. <laughs> And I look at it, and I wake up with it, and I look at it again. Mm -hmm. And that was the time when I was working on those auras, and mm -hmm. I knew. Well, I think it works perfectly the way that you did it here. It's more subtle, so it kind yeah. of, because it's more subtle, it shows more depth, it seems like, in the connect in the connection. Definitely. You know, that, that it's a connection that they, that they both feel for sure, and it doesn't really have to be screaming. Right. So, that was that. <laughs> and it's perfect. <laughs> Does anybody else have any questions that they want? Can you talk about the space they're in? It, it, you know, it looks like there's crystals and, and it's kind of this cave-like space yes. physically, but is there um, like a metaphorical space that you had them in as well, at this point of connection? Well, well, I'm, I'm, not sure if, I'm not sure if the question is being picked up by the mic, so you might rephrase the question in your answer. Okay. I don't know if they can hear up there. Yeah. Oh. Well, the question was about the space that they're in, whether it's a physical space or if there's any metaphor behind it. And I can also elaborate on this, too, from right. writing the book. But if right. you want to talk about what your vision for it was. When I work on a commission, I'm trying to uh, tune in as much as I can into the vision mm -hmm. without putting too much of my own mm. view unless yeah. it it really works completely right. like, unless I feel mm -hmm. that it's right there mm -hmm. so um, I I left the uh, metaphor mm -hmm. to uh, to after mm -hmm. so they're in an ice cave that's what these uh, hanging icicles are and there's ice crystals and yeah, that's an ice cave, and it's a scene from the novel, and it's physical, they're in the dream sphere, which is the dream dimension, but also it represents the cave as a metaphor for the unconscious, so which goes oh. along with dreaming. But also the cave is also a metaphor for the female matrix, so also oh. coming forth from being birthed mm. into oh. the world, so that's like what the whole metaphor is oh. from that scene in the right. book. Yeah. Right. So cool. I'm glad you, 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 uh, you brought it over. Mm -hmm. I, uh, wow. no, my work was to to bring out uh, the vision that I felt mm -hmm. was uh, was completely in tune with mm -hmm. with your vision, mm -hmm. 
And once, while I was working on it, I had all these thoughts coming yeah. through my mind. Like, <laughs> like yes, they are, they are in the space, but I kind of left it dark, but I yeah. left it open here in a way. Like, mm -hmm. there is an opening here, yeah. and there is an opening here, but they are, mm -hmm. but they are enclosed. Right. And it's like, I was thinking more about things that are unseen exactly. out there, mm -hmm. you know, what's happening out there. Mm -hmm. And then there's the light coming in from this side, which yeah. I really like. There's the contrast, the dark on that side, and then the light on this side. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, I, I, I like that too. I like that idea. And uh, yeah, it took me a while to balance it out. Mm. So, Zoom um, in close up. So the it looks already. like there is... Almost um, fell when I grabbed it. Yeah. There is darkness, yeah, exactly. but that darkness is It needs not, pressure that uh, way. Yeah. Yeah. It's like unknown, right. but it's not negative. Exactly. So it's it goes negative. along with the dreaming of the unconscious. So it's yeah. not negative, but it's those things yeah. that are like deep in the consciousness. Right, yeah. exactly. So mm -hmm. that's that's what that is. Mm -hmm. If we're thinking about it symbolically, that's right. what that is. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I especially... Like how it, uh, how it kind of goes in that turquoise goes mm -hmm. out so, here. So Marie, yeah. In, 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 I was coming up with the concept for this, and you discussed it. You got some of the ideas from Avatar. You, you produced the sketch. Mm -hmm. um, that was did it. Did you did you know much about the story, or you captured more the spirit of the story? To, to, I just to read the I just read the couple of was a couple yeah. of pages. Yeah. The scene that this this image comes from. Right. So, mm -hmm. I read that and then and then we talked, we met, we talked mm -hmm. and um, we drew this little sketch mm -hmm. and I thought that was pretty good. So this, so this is a case of two creatives inspiring each other, yeah. you know, building off of each other's energy to, yeah. to, to create. Yeah, to create definitely. Something. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Then strictly from, uh, from um, uh, my imagination mm -hmm. and I, uh, after told me that they need to have black hair yeah. and that his hair is more or less like that. Mm -hmm. I wasn't yeah. sure. Mm -hmm. And her hair was longer yep. mm -hmm. and that they were young. Yeah. So they're main characters from the novel. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. So that's all I knew, that they had dark hair and that they were young. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. So I pretty much described kind of loosely what they look like. And right. then Monique ran with that. So, Avatar, what, what yeah. was your inspiration from the book? And, and Monique discussed how mm -hmm. visual artwork doesn't come together as, as words, but it's more the ideas and, and perhaps very dreamlike, which would be appropriate. Yeah. And your inspiration <laughs> no, for creating this, were yeah. you, uh, um, what was it? Was it words? Was it storytelling? Was it was it was it a vision of an image or a feeling or an emotion that you want or emotions you wanted to knit together for this? Or what was your your? Uh, you you mean like why I picked this scene to be the, uh, yeah. the either the cover? scene or either the scene or the book in general? Oh okay. Uh, Whatever you like to. It's <laughs> <laughs> a very broad question. Yes. Um, uh, you restate like the essence of what the question is. What was is. your inspiration? Oh, my inspiration, just, you know, life and spiritual experiences, spiritual uh, awakening and spiritual evolving, you know, that's like kind of the mythology of it. So, like, this image, I don't know why the scene stuck out at me, and I was like, this should be the cover for the painting. I mean, for the book, you know, cover for the book. I thought it really captured kind of the essence of what the book is about, which is like spiritual kind of enlightenment and that spiritual connection between beings. Right. And also like uh, emerging from the cave of unconsciousness into a more aware, expanded awareness. I don't know if that is <laughs> answers what you were trying to get at. Yeah. That was a great question. I I never asked that question. Why that why that particular scene? Mm -hmm. But but I thought it was um, 
very significant because we don't know what happened before. Mm. We don't know what happens after. Right. Maybe we can guess. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> exactly. You know what it's leading to. Right. <laughs> and so we're both kind of smiling, you know. So so it's like we we have an idea. This mm -hmm. it has future. Yeah. This scene has future, mm -hmm. although we don't really uh, have it described here. But mm. it's pretty clear that. There is a strong connection between them, mm -hmm. so I I really liked that uh, that that part that that uh, that was all actors' idea yeah. to to make it look like that to make that connection visible, mm -hmm. right? Which is something that we don't I mm -hmm. don't see that a lot, right? Yeah. That mm -hmm. that connection is actually visible, right? So it's the sixth dimension, right? Exactly. The, so, the so, the, mm -hmm. so, the, so the setting of this painting is yeah. in a very unique place, and, yeah. and it, it, it's obviously a cave. And you meant, mentioned that earlier yeah. that it's sort of this, this emergence of the cavern or something. Mm -hmm. But in, in Monique's selection of the cover colors and the form of the cave, yeah. is that a metaphor for something, or is that or is that left for the reader to interpret what that is, or is that to be revealed? Mm -hmm. um, well, I like to leave some of it to be interpreted by you know the reader or the whoever's viewing it, you know. But I mean, I have my own interpretation of it. But I mean, it's ice, so I mean, ice. There's a lot of blue and you know purple and stuff, and you know her aura is purple, his is white. In the book, that's how. how Whoa! All these colors are actually in there and more. Mm -hmm. So so it depends on the cave and yeah. it depends on how light hits it. Mm -hmm. And, and it was fun. It was so much fun to work on this. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it was a lot of fun. So I, I don't want to go too yeah. far with my own interpretations of what I okay. see, but it's such a powerful connection between the two figures yeah. and the space that they're in. Uh -huh. is, is, it, is it fair to say that the energy of this, of this, uh, this uh, embryonic environment, uh -huh. or this sort of nutrient space, and uh -huh. they're, they're, they're drawing on that, and is that feeding their auras? Uh, and is, is it, is yeah. It, uh, mm -hmm. Some synergy happening between all of these elements, the environment and the individuals. And yeah, the you're exactly right, and that's you read the uh, the scene, you're right. and so that exactly happens. I mean, you can infer that this leads to, you know, an intimate scene between the two of them, and you know their auras and just like reflect off of the ice, and so that's like the whole scene is like these auras playing with the ice in the cave yeah. and kind of like strobe lighting and it's yeah. it, it's a fantastic kind yeah. of it's dreamlike sequence right and so i wanted it to like we haven't discussed it yet but to infer kind of a sexual nature but not be too overt about it if that makes sense you know well yeah mm -hmm. because sexual nature is not just sexual nature mm -hmm. there's so much more to it mm -hmm. so so I hope that this is coming through in the painting. It definitely does. I that, think so. that they actually mm -hmm. have a, a, a real connection, mm -hmm. and that and that they are uh, happy about it. Yes, mm -hmm. definitely. That there is energy in between them that's mm -hmm. that's really wonderful mm -hmm. and inspiring for both of them. So that's how I that's how I I, I saw it, mm -hmm. and I love the. Darkness of it, because in the darkness there is so much. As I already said, mm -hmm. there is so much unknown. Yes, <laughs> exactly. Yeah. So it's exploring that. Yeah. 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 Dave Fritz wants to know if the painting will be on public display at all. So if uh, if it happens that we're going to have it on display somewhere, I hope he will allow me to have it on display. Right. <laughs> on the other hand, I own the image, mm -hmm. so uh, I can print print mm -hmm. if anyone is interested, and and that's how it goes. Actor mm -hmm. owns the painting. Mm -hmm. So if painting is going to be shown anywhere in any gallery or mm -hmm. wherever, yeah. So if I, if, I, if I might ask a question to maybe, maybe partially rephrase this, um, mm -hmm. will there be 
your, your book right now, we're presenting yeah. a math manuscript, mm -hmm. right? So, so the, the hard, hard press version is coming out in October. Le end of October. End of yes. October. Uh -huh. okay. So, will you have? Will there be a book launch event, and perhaps the painting will be on display at that event? Yes. At, at, well, at, at yeah. a place to be determined. Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, we talked about that, and I said I wanted you to be part of it. Okay, so, right. so, so, the answer, so the answer to the question is yes, mm -hmm. it'll be at the book launch event, at maybe end of October. Yeah, mm -hmm. and otherwise, uh, Early November, yeah. the prints will be available if anyone is interested, mm -hmm. pretty much any time. So, mm -hmm. you know, yeah. small or larger, usually smaller than mm -hmm. the original. Yeah. yeah, and they'll also have it on the cover of my book. Exactly. <laughs> yes. Uh -huh. Yes, mm -hmm. yes, so perfect. Mm -hmm. So uh, we've already asked some questions about the book. Anything anybody else wants to ask questions about about the book or mm -hmm. maybe still about the painting? Mm -hmm. And if okay. not, I can we can wrap it up by me reading the excerpt yeah. from yeah, the book. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Yeah, exactly. Let's All do right. that then. <laughs> I'll stand on the floor so I can watch and guide you. She slid her legs off the side of the bed and stood up beside it, facing Terry. Close your eyes. Terry closed his eyes. He saw spinning patterns behind his eyelids, Metatron's cube and the flower of life. Now visualize, if you would, Eden continued, a rope dropping down from the ceiling. The end reaches just above your sternum, close enough that you can grab it. Terry projected the rope from his third eye and saw the end hovering just above his chest. I see it, he said. It's there. Good. You have a very vivid imagination and ability to visualize. That's going to serve you very well, Eden said, excited. Now your astral body is one of your energy or light bodies. What you want to do is pull the arms of your astral body out of your physical arms and grab hold of the rope. Terry focused on what he was supposed to do. He could feel his consciousness pressing to break free of his physical form. Suddenly, after a moment of intense concentration, a pair of semi-translucent arms pulled from his flesh. Waving his astral hands in front of his face, Terry could visually see them in his mind's eye. Then he grasped the end of the rope hanging from the ceiling. I did it, he exclaimed. I have the rope. Now what? Pull yourself out of your body. Eden was watching him and could actually see all of this visually because that was one of the abilities her soul mind gave her. She could see the rope and the arms of Terry's astral body trying to pull itself free of the physical. He struggled with the rope. His astral body seemed like it didn't want to detach from its abode with the physical well. Terry pulled and pulled, trying to get a higher grasp on the rope. Then he projected the word release across his third eye, and suddenly he was loose. He climbed hand over hand and pulled his whole astral body from his physical body. His consciousness was separated now. There was a silver cord coming out of the chest of his astral body and stretched to connect to the heart within his unconscious physical form. Terry looked at Eden, who stared, at, stared back at him, seeing everything. He was hovering above his body, holding on to the rope. Holy shit, Terry said, looking down at his new form and the body below him. I look like a fucking ghost. Now what do we do? With a gasp, Eden pulled her astral body out, and her physical body dropped limply to the floor. She hovered, feet above the ground, and same silver cord attaching her consciousness to the physical form. Had no idea that you could do this, did you? Eden smiled. Terry shook his semi-transparent head. Let's go. She grabbed Terry's ash air of the atmosphere. Illinois was now a tiny patch far below. Are we going to go be able to get back, Terry asked getting a little nervous going this far above the earth. The stars were above, the clouds below. Trust me, Eden assured him. Haven't you ever wanted to be an astronaut? Yes, actually I did. Well, now's your chance. Terry and Eden finally broke through Earth's atmosphere, and they both looked back in wonder at the blue planet below them. It's so fucking beautiful, Terry said, astral tears coming to his eyes. That's our home. It's a miracle. I never really appreciated our mother very much before. I took for granted how nature takes care of us and how magical our planet actually is. I know, right? Eden agreed. From this perspective, our Earth is heaven. I don't understand why so many people want to turn it into hell. 
Then Terry looked up and all around at the sparkling stars and the vast voidness and darkness of space. It was so enormous, he wondered how many lifetimes it would take for him to, to explore all of it, every planet, every star system. Where are we going, he asked. Eden pointed away from the Earth, the finger pointing at the moon. We go to Luna. To the moon? We are real astronauts. Eden smiled as they began to fly again. We're psychonauts. What's that, Terry asked. We explore all realms of consciousness and the soul. We are mystics. Welcome to mystery school. Eden winked at Terry as they flew closer and closer toward the moon. What's that? Terry asked. They stopped halfway between the Earth and the moon. What? What is it? Eden looked around, scanning space and the stars. Down there, toward the Earth, Terry pointed. I don't see anything, Eden admitted. Wait, what is that? There was a small dot coming through the Earth's atmosphere and getting larger, as if it was propelling toward them. Maybe a rocket, Terry said. NASA could be launching something today. Eden squinted as the object grew larger and larger as it came closer. Now they could make out that it was red in color and was being propelled by some kind of rocket thrusters. Whatever it was broke through the Earth's atmosphere and approached them at speed. The object zoomed past Ter Eden and Terry and off into deep space. They only managed to get a blurry glimpse of it, and then all they could see were the flames from its thrusters as it disappeared toward the sea of stars. Eden looked at Terry with her mouth hanging open. Is that a fucking van? <laughs> Terry burst out laughing. That's totally what it looked like. A red conversion van or something with rocket thrusters attached to the back. <laughs> Eden couldn't contain herself and fell into a fit of laughter at the ridiculousness of what they had just witnessed. Oh my God, she said, catching her breath from laughing so hard. You never know the crazy stuff that you're going to see out here. <laughs> I can see that, Terry agreed. Fucking van flying off into the depths of space? You don't see that every day. I'm definitely going to wonder about that now. <laughs> Some mysteries don't ever get solved, Eden said, looking off into the distance where the van had flown away. We just have to appreciate the craziness of existence and try not to think about it too much. She laughed again. If I tried to figure out all the things that I've seen and experienced, I'd go totally nutty. <laughs> they began flying again, Mr. set up, he asked. Eden shrugged. I don't know, actually. I've astro traveled up here several times and have never seen a flag anywhere. <laughs> Strange. What's that? Terry pointed off into the distance at a smooth black object. What? Eden followed where he was pointing with her gaze. The Black Pyramid? There's a fucking pyramid on the moon? Yeah, she answered. It's completely smooth on all sides. Come, I'll show you. They went over the pyramid, traveling with a mixture of walking and floating. When they were a few feet away from it, they both stopped to admire the structure. The black pyramid was about the size of a house, and there were no visible entrances on any of the sides. The black stone it was constructed from was completely smooth. You don't think it's weird that there's a pyramid on the moon, Terry said? I don't know, Eden replied honestly. I hadn't really thought about it that much. Hadn't thought about it that much? Terry scoffed. I'd be obsessing over this all the time. You never thought to mention to me that there's a black fucking pyramid on the surface of the moon? What do you mean? You think that would be something I would just bring up randomly in a conversation? Oh, hey, by the way, there's this pyramid on the moon. Seems like something we should explore. How would that ever come up organically in a discussion? <laughs> okay, okay, I see your point. Terry conceded the issue and turned his attention back to the structure in front of them. You ever been inside this thing? Of course I went inside. I was curious about it, too. It's just some weird room in there. Seems totally useless. But no moon men? Terry asked with a serious face. Never seen any moon men in there? Or on the surface here? Really? Moon men? Seriously? Eden said sarcastically. When she realized Terry wasn't joking, she answered, No, I haven't ever seen any moon men. Okay, I was just checking. Don't act like it's such a crazy question, given the scope of all the different dimensions we have access to with our soul minds. He winked at Eden and floated. Oh, buzzing the entire chamber. Eden could feel the tone resonating in her chest. When she opened her eyes, Terry was climbing into the sarcophagus and laid on his back, staring up at the ceiling. I feel it, she said, grasping the edge of the stone. This is some powerful energy in here. Be careful in that thing. You don't know what it was designed for. 
Don't worry, my love. We're together. Don't be afraid. Terry felt the cyclone force of spiraling energy originate in his chest. It burst out of his solar plexus in bright showers of white light. As he stared at the ceiling, it dissolved, and the vastness of space could be seen beyond it. Terry watched as if it was an IMAX movie at the planetarium. Galaxies, stars, nebulas, and black holes raced across the blackness of space. It was like he was watching creation taking place at rapid speed. Stars exploded, planets were born, and whole solar systems were sucked into black holes and reincarnated on the other side of the fabric of space. He just stared in awe, feeling as if he was made of these celestial bodies, dying and being reborn on a cosmic scale. Then all the heavenly bodies of light converged, making a shining spiral stretching up into infinity. All of a sudden, Terry felt like he was being pulled from below, that he was going to be sucked through the bottom of the sarcophagus and into an unknown realm. Eden, Terry yelled, unable to pull himself free of the force sucking him down. I'm being pulled. It's trying to take me somewhere. Don't let it take you, Eden yelled back, panic in her voice. You don't know if you'd be able to come back out again. Help! Terry managed to squeak out in spite of the tremendous force dragging him. Instinctively, Eden reached down and grabbed his hand, trying to pull him out and free of the current. Her pink and red soul mind immediately came to her aid, spiraling out of her chest and connecting to Terry's, pulling him up. With the combined power connected through tantric embrace, the powerful grip pulling Terry down loosened and was severed. He was pulled up and out over the side of the sarcophagus. They embraced, both auras becoming one electromagnetic dance of white, red, and pink. I thought I was going to lose you there for a second. You'd be taken somewhere where I couldn't follow, Eden said with relief. I love you so much, Terry said, astral forms hugging each other tightly. Thanks for pulling me out. Of course, babe, Eden reassured him that she always had his back in dangerous situations. Let's go. Terry agreed, and hand in hand they slid back through the wall of the pyramid, out to the surface of the moon. They danced, hand in hand, bouncing high into the air off of the ground, spinning and flipping together. They were two psychonauts performing an astral tango of souls. They both laughed with euphoric ecstasy, elated to be connecting with each other in this strange and transcendent way. As they spun, silver cords trailing in a spiral around them, Terry and Eden floated farther and farther away from the moon and back toward the blue planet they had come from. In a cosmic lover's embrace, they streaked through the void, stars twinkling in the distance. Careening on a collision course toward Earth, the two felt again as if they melted into each other, becoming one entity, more powerful than the sum of their parts. Finally, they broke through the upper atmosphere. Through the clouds, the continents of North and South America could be seen, small at first and rapidly becoming larger. Down through the clouds, then the outline of the shape of Illinois came. Uh, at the end of October, I will uh, put up an event on Facebook. I'm going to be having a book release party slash event at the studio in Reno. And then after it's officially released on October 24th, uh, everyone can get it on Amazon. But if you come to the event, you can buy physical copies from me. Oh, and <laughs> Avatar, what, what, what is your Sign. Facebook page? Sign, yeah. Sign huh? What is your Facebook page? Uh, Avatar Simmer. Avatar yeah. Simmer Sing. Mm -hmm. That was so cool. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. It was just wonderful. Oh, I loved it. I loved it. Me too. I had too much champagne. <laughs> I had a glass and a half. I'm <laughs> but guys, mm -hmm. thank you so much for mm -hmm. watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Mm -hmm. And uh, check Avatar's uh, website. Check mm -hmm. my website, moniquebell.com. Mm -hmm. There is um, a part of my website that talk, that's about my art. Mm -hmm. I think it says galleries or it says yeah. art or something. So get a commission painting from Monique. I do commissions, you know my artwork, mm -hmm. otherwise it's uh, usually very abstract, mm -hmm. very strict triangles, mm -hmm. <laughs> but uh, I love to do commissions, I love to mm -hmm. collaborate. connect, yeah. collaborate like we did, that was awesome, thank mm -hmm. you guys, and i uh, see you at the launch of, uh, at the launch of, yeah, of, uh, of a dream of true time, dream mm -hmm. of true time, mm -hmm. love you guys, bye, <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.